My name is Rick Braddock. Um, I'm the current uh, leaseholder of the farm and concession on Motutapu Island. Um, this has been a pastoral farm since around 1840, originally privately owned and then fell into public hands uh, during the Second World War when it was compulsorily acquired for defence purposes. Prior to European occupation, Māori lived here for 600 years and it's one of the most sensitive pieces of Māori uh, lived on land in, uh, in New Zealand. So it's a very sensitive piece of land, it's a conservation estate, it's now owned by all of, all of New Zealand. Uh, and being responsible for the farming of it, I'm very mindful that I should be farming uh, in an appropriate, sustainable, natural way as much as possible. About five years ago, the Department of Conservation went through a pest eradication program on both these islands. That meant from a farming point of view, uh, we had a halt in farming practices. We destocked the island completely for a period of uh, seven to eight to nine months. Um, and it forced, forced us and forced myself to re-look at and re-engage with the way we went about our pastoral farming. And it was through the, the help of a uh, gentleman who are here today, Alan Main and Max Purnell, um, that encouraged me to look at a more natural way of farming or a more biological way of farming. I wanted to understand the soil uh, and understand it as a, as a living system rather than an inert substance that we put synthetic chemical on to produce grass. Um, the, although the farm had been productive, um, I was wanting to see whether there was a different way of farming the island uh, and whether that could add both to productivity and economic value. The result of that, and we've been farming under that system now for about six years, is very positive. Uh, we are seeing our um, uh, our pasture growth rate, our soil moisture content, um, our uh, livestock uh, health uh, all advance. And that's not just me, that's my shepherds talking about that as well. They're out there every day uh, uh, moving those livestock and dealing with those livestock. The livestock you'll see them today are, uh, are happy, even though uh, we're in the worst drought period that this island has seen for a long, long time. We've had 17 mils of rain here since the 1st of December and it's, uh, it's almost April. Uh, despite that, and with the Kikuya uh, Basin in terms of our pastures, we're holding on very well. Our covers are strong. Uh, uh, we still have clover in amongst the Kikuya. We're still growing grass. Uh, and uh, so there's something really happening in the biology of these soils which is working. So um, that's enough to convince me that uh, this way of farming is a more sensible, practical, uh, an agreeable way to farm than, uh, than what we were doing previously. Hello, Murray Johnston uh, from Countdown. I'm the General Manager of Merchandise here in New Zealand. From our point of view, as a large New Zealand retailer, actually following the product right back to the very start is very important to us. And whether it's pork or whether it's chicken, whether it's beef, it's actually understanding where that comes from, which means we have to visit the farm so we can actually guarantee our consumer that that product is exactly what it says it needs to be. It's just so important to us. And we work through uh, SPCA, those sort of authorities, just making sure that our accreditation is valid and true. So as we move forward, we just need to keep taking that process another step forward further and further, because the customer's looking for it, looking for it. I'm Max Purnell and uh, I farm at Waitakaruri at the top of the Hauraki Gulf down here and uh, I have had a long deep interest in soils. We have been out here a few times now and dug holes and so I'm having a bit of fun digging a hole again to see what has happened after five years of really dramatically changed different practice. Very drawn to the idea that Rick was able to remove all the stock for a period of time and explore what happened when he ran deep residual rooting systems, long pasture swards and uh, all the attendant benefits. This is quite remarkable for the uh, drought conditions we're under. And see how easily the spade goes in. How beautiful and crumbly and dark the soils are. In fact they all break apart like that shows you that it's full of mycelium and fungi if we could only get it under a microscope. In fact, you can smell it. It's uh, easy to smell. 
the difference between fungal soils and not. Got that sweet smell to it. And it's lovely, Alan. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's good aerobic uh, biomass. And look, if you go deeper in the whole mix, uh, you'll just find that there's an extension of these roots uh, well down into the subsoil. Yes, well, we could just keep digging and find just that. I'm confident. Feel how easy it's still going in. You wouldn't be getting this green on top here if you hadn't penetrated that by some distance. There we go, there's the the untapped clays that last time we were here a number of years ago when we hit that it went to solid hard pan. hard pan it's now uh, full of roots and getting and a bit easier to dig still full of roots and so they're doing the job I'm Graham Robertson and I come from North Otago, born and raised on a um, mixed cropping farm at a little place called Mahino. On the animal health side of it, um, since we've been doing the bio uh, super acceptor that we've been putting on, um, before I came on board the uh, copper deficiency was actually getting the copper every two months. Now we're down to lucky if it's uh, once every six months. And the last test has actually proved, through the works of a liver test, has proved that our selenium and copper levels are right up there. When I first came in here, we had a lot of uh, woody tongue problems. That's virtually disappeared. And pink eye. In fact, the only pink I've got at the moment came on with a mob not long ago. For actually drenching, it's virtually nil. These won't get enough. These only have one drench in the 12 months they've been on here. From a weed perspective, and this is this weed here, uh, this thorny apple weed, uh, we haven't treated this weed at all. So it's, it's dead and dying, um, and uh, something's happening in the soil biology, which is um, stopping that uh, weed from growing as it used to grow. Uh, and I'm sure the kikuyu uh, growing up around it is suppressing seeds and weeds that are in the ground. So we haven't applied any significant chemical to weeds here for the last six years. Uh, and the island, and you can talk to any that have been associated with, is much cleaner than it has ever been. Almost by default, uh, we were forced into what uh, I've known as the term of, as rolling fallow. So we were allowed, all of our pastures grew, grew up considerably, and uh, uh, to the point of covers of four to 6,000 kilos of dry matter per hectare. Um, some consultants were telling me that that was a significant problem, that we'd never recover from that, uh, and that this pasture would uh, roll over, die, rot, and cause huge problems. Um, uh, once we restocked the island, uh, and we restocked principally with, with cattle, uh, we were able to, to chew that cover off, uh, and, and we had fresh pastures coming away from that. So something was happening within the soil and within the biology of that soil which was healthy through that rolling fallow uh, stage. I'm sure it was a cleansing time and, and, and I'm sure the island breathed a huge sigh of relief. The consumer will be looking for, okay, the animal's now looked after properly, what's the next big thing that's gonna happen? It's a case of what's fed and how, how it's grown up those sort of things are the next big developments that can come along. Will you get a premium for that if the story is honest and clean? So I think biological farming, ecological farming, whatever you want to call that, is a big opportunity for New Zealand. When you first are driving your root depth, you're going to be using the energy supplied by the sunlight and photosynthesis to do that. And so that you don't get the benefits immediately. Your quality goes up down, down the track a little bit, but you have to get onto that treadmill to get there. And I think the inputs that, that can be supplied by some of the biological farming systems, including what happened here, I would say, with the input of, of some fertilizers with the high calcium contents, etc., we're all a way of, of bridging that gap. You know, I'm just a small farmer. Uh, you know, I only have 250 acres, and I always thought that was a large farm was when I started. But uh, I still, over the last 10 or 15, 20 years, we're just increasingly run this program and so you just get there over time. And I think there's room uh, to add, uh, again, to, uh, as dependent on the farming model, uh, that the addition of more natural minerals like calcium carbonate and uh, reactive phosphate rock 
would really, now you've got a base to start there, would really pay dividends uh, on a capital basis for every tonne you put on there, you're going to get a whole lot more uh, value out of the farm. From what I've seen and what I'm working with, is a great opportunity uh, to follow what started here into a much broader landscape of New Zealand farming.